Hey everybody, welcome to The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. I hope your day is going well, and if it's not, I hope this distracts you and it gets a little bit better. So today we're going to be talking about duckweed. And yeah, it's the stuff that's growing in many of our aquariums. It is the little green plant that could. Now, a lot of aquarists think that this is a nuisance, and that's generally a phase for many of the aquarists I know, because then they come to know that it tells you a whole lot about your aquarium. It's one of those barometer plants. You can tell by how much there is, by how quick it's growing, by how long the roots are, a whole lot about your aquarium and your ecosystem. Other people, like aquascapers, may think, no, never, not even one follicle of duckweed in my aquarium. And that's fine, too. But today we're going to talk about duckweed in our aquarium, but moreover we're going to talk about why it's being studied in universities and governments around the world having to do with world global security, national security, food security, water security, and a myriad of other things. And what an incredible little plant it is. So let's go over some of the benefits that it has for our aquarium. And at the same time, let's talk about the story of how duckweed could be the solution to many of the world's problems, in combination with many other things, obviously. But this amazing little plant is going to go places, and that is for sure. It already has. It's already on every continent. So... If that sounds good to you, grab yourself a beverage and a snack, and let's jump into it now. Hit that like button, and let's dig in. So, we probably all have heard of, know about duckweed, right? Oftentimes in aquarium circles and hobbyists, we can even joke that it's kind of the cold sore of the aquarium trade. Once you get some, you always are going to have it in your room. It's hard to get out of your fish room. And you get one little piece on your hand and it gets in another tank and another tank and another tank. Well, this plant is a survivor and it has a lot of evolutionary tricks up its sleeve. And almost every fish keeper I know still seems to have it in their tanks. Unless they're doing some sort of aquascaping project or whatnot. So today I want to take a look at the academic work that's been done on duckweed and discuss the multitude of positive impacts that duckweed is having on our aquarium, but also bring up that crucial research uh, and information recently highlighted at the United Nations during a hearing on the future of water security and water access, along with drought mitigation, food security, and as the world is projected to reach a population of nearly 10 billion by the year 2050, uh, today we will cover how the aquarium benefits of duckweed bleed over into some of the world benefits that are being applied now by scientists and researchers all over the world. So how is it being used to reshape our world as we know it? It is already currently being used as a food source for humans and animals alike. It is used to prevent evaporation in desert reservoirs, and tropical locations, and it's even used to clean up harmful algae blooms and cyanobacteria outbreaks, and even pollution from things like hydrocarbons left by oil spills and heavy metals from industrial sites. Duckweed can also be a sign that there are too many nutrients in the water, like farms polluting a system, so it's also a great indicator species. Now, the fact that duckweed and algae are being spoken about and examined by the UN and US Department of Defense over at the Pentagon should grab our attention on its own. I know it caused me to take a pause and think a little bit more about our humble friend, the duckweed. And it made me look in depth and it became clear that duckweed is being explored for an enormous amount of uses. So. How does duckweed have anything to do with civil unrest, wars, and our aquariums? Those are kind of different things, right? Well, in 2021, Congress actually deemed water stability and preservation of water a major matter of national security. And by 2022, it was brought up amongst several similar topics made at con congressional agendas 
and meetings, as well as in the Defense Department. So why are governments around the world worrying about this and saying that, you know, water and drought and food have to do with security? That's pretty easy to see. People aren't happy when they don't have the basic things to live and they will do just about anything to get them. Now, this interesting little genus of plants uh, is collectively known as duckweed or duckweeds. And with 2022 and the massive droughts that plagued the American Southwest, the Rio Grande and the Colorado River were running at all-time lows, and even they ran dry in some stretches. It was painfully clear that the U.S. Southwest and the world needed some better practical and affordable solutions that we could implement very quickly to help mitigate these problems. Now, in the U.S. Southwest alone, over 15 million people rely on the waters of just those two river systems. And they're looking at some really unlikely solutions while they're looking at this topic. So nothing is off the table. And the issue of water security, food production, and nutritional security, as well as carbon emissions, and the stability of nation states, as well as local and regional states and municipalities, has all become a deadly serious matter. People will kill for water, not just in our country, but some 50 million Americans live in drought-prone locations, as do people all across the world. And our water usage continues to skyrocket, so every drop counts, and every clean drop counts even more. So with people all around the world, prominently in the Middle East, Europe, Australia, Central Asia, uh, Central and Northern Africa, and then Southeast Asia, uh, they're facing deadly droughts that are getting worse. And at a staggering level, we're also polluting our water sources. So with problems around every corner, yet our population continues to expand and we need to put people places and feed them. Without water, simply put, there is no life. The control of our rivers and lakes, as well as the damming of our rivers, is already an issue that has nations staring down one another and considering war. Look at the Nile. Look at the Mekong and Mekong rivers and the control of them. And to preemptively gain control of Earth's most precious resource, people are willing to do a lot of things. So let's go back to our own aquarium for a minute, take it down a notch. How is it that a messy, minuscule little plant, Lemnia minor, aka duckweed, may end up being part of the solution to many of these world problems? Well, first let's take a look at what duckweed can do for the aquarium a couple ways, and we'll kind of bounce back and forth and see the parallels. Hopefully this sheds some light on what it could be capable of doing to help solve and mitigate droughts, famines, and population growth issues that are staring us down right now every day. Then we'll take a look at the latest research and science and conclude by discussing the benefits both firsthand and secondhand that duckweed may hold in store for our world and our fish tanks. Now, duckweed grows on every continent other than Antarctica and can be found from the jungles to the deserts to the tundra, as I said, various species uh, with more being engineered all the time by humans, both by selective breeding and horticulture, as we've done for generations and generations, as we've created things like kale and carrots and chard and all sorts of different things, radishes, potatoes, and by genetic modification. Now, these are all in order to enrich its nutrient profile, the parameters in which it grows, and a lot of other variables. Likely meaning the duckweed will quite possibly be one of the plants at the forefront of solving a lot of our problems that we don't even know exist yet. Duckweed is also the fastest growing plant in the world, and it has bamboo, seaweed, and shrubs beat by a long shot. In fact, duckweed doubles its bio load every 16 to 48 hours. And <laughs> that means daily 
it can produce a whole lot of biomass. It has a nutritional profile that in combination with a complex starch such as rice or wheat, potatoes, can create nearly a complete nutritional food source for humans, as well as a great feed for dozens and dozens of species of animals humans keep. Now, it has been said that with a few choice supplements and daily vitamins, that a serving of carbohydrates and some duckweed can sustain a human being nearly indefinitely, even as is. That's before we genetically modify it, do things like we've done with golden rice and put vitamins A, E, and C in it in higher amounts. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't plan on eating scoops of duckweed anytime soon. However, the nutritional contents within duckweed and various algae and uh, floating plant uh, species is really interesting. It's already in protein powders and our cereals and it's used as a byproduct and filler as well as a additive in many many products including vitamins already. Duckweed is easy to grow and it requires very little input of care or resources to keep up with it. It yields massive returns with very little upfront. And it's 30 to 40% protein by dry weight. It offers, offers all nine essential amino acids, a host of dietary fibers, polyphenols, iron, zinc, and vitamin B12, with the new vi variants that they're engineering also having tons of unsaturated fats for a plant, and vitamins A, E, and C. It is one of the rare crops that requires a vertical depth of only one to two inches to grow of water, and fish can live under that happily, which are another food source, and that same column can have terrestrial plants growing immersed out of it like these here as well. Not to mention one square meter of water can support 20 grams of dry, dried duckweed matter every day being harvested. To compare it with corn, it has 50 times the yield per square foot. One hectare, or about 2.25 acres, will yield 1.4 million pounds of duckweed a year. So there are hundreds of recipes online that detail how to transform duckweed into fish food. Uh, and, you know, turtles, goldfish, they already eat it. So if you want to talk about that and... Uh, transform the stuff floating into your tank into a free food source, that's a great thing to do. A lot of your fish, like cichlids and things, may already be munching on it. But if you'd like me to get into some preparations and recipes and stuff, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you like this content. And also, while you're at it, let me know if you have a good recipe for a fish flake or sinking wafer where you're utilizing duckweed. Because I keep seeing more and more with people coming up with really uh, ingenious mixes of the stuff and it's a great use for the duckweed that we're just kind of producing anyways so it has actually been used as a medicine by dozens of cultures around the world for millennia it's been shown to reduce the risk of diabetes as well as shown to help the uptake of certain essential vitamins and minerals that cannot be metabolized or digested properly uh, by human bodies without certain enzymes and alkaloids that we have to get from plants. And it's all in one neat little package in the duckweed leaves themselves. So for humans, it's been a food source very similar to microgreens or couscous or uh, grains uh, for a long time. And in many Asian cultures specifically, uh, it has been used mixed in with food, made into a paste or kind of a, a dough and it has more protein than soybeans pound for pound. Notably, its growth is reducing the carbon footprint as well. So the energy needed to create a digestible protein with four times less carbon uh, being used to create it than any other method that's currently being done farming. Because usually you have to go uh, get gasoline for the tractor. You have to get equipment and, and do all these processes, get fertilizers and things. And with duckweed, you don't have to do that. You can just let it grow in your ponds and it has a myriad of benefits that it can bestow upon us just being duckweed. So it can be 
pretty interesting that this grows with so much potential, and yet it also still clears up nitrates, uh, nitrites, ammonia in our aquariums, or in polluted rivers and lakes. Duckweed is one of the fastest plants at actually processing nitrogen out of the water, and it can reduce a 20-gallon aquarium from 60 parts per million nitrates to 30 parts per million nitrates overnight with proper lighting. So scientists and aquarists alike have been using this floating plant and others uh, to reduce the levels of nitrates in water for over 50 years now, it's been known about. And it's kind of an indicator if it blooms up that there's something going on, like farm fertilizer has gotten into the water. But it needs the fuel to grow just like anything else. However, it's able to turn a small amount of fuel into a large amount of benefit for us. So when it has the nitrogen, the phosphates, the CO2, and sunlight, it can actually reduce the surface evaporation of the water it's living in by up to 25% also. So that means that it's not only nutritious, but it's stopping the water from evaporating as quickly by one quarter. That's water going up into the atmosphere all day, every day that it's reducing. And it also insulates water when it's cold. It keeps the water warmer underneath, which can be good or bad, but it has its uses. So it has this seemingly magic ability to trap heat that's very useful for saving on our heating in our aquarium bills. It reduces our electricity use and also by default our carbon uh, footprint usually uh, in doing so. Now this plant moves water through osmosis and capillary action, which means that it still allows 75% of the water to evaporate which allows it to still cool over time. So it's not going to, you know, keep it so warm that it cooks everything usually. But it is worth noting that it can retain so much heat if you have one of those heaters that's set to, say, 78 degrees in your aquarium for fish that doesn't have a, a thermostat on it, that it can actually get very, very warm. And if it's low in the aquarium, the convection that goes on takes some time and that can actually cause the heat to rise and the aquarium thermometer and uh, thermostat is gonna still say that it's cooler and it can heat the aquarium up too much. So it is something to note if you do have a thick layer of, of the duckweed on there. That's something that you might wanna watch out for. Now, the other thing you wanna watch out for is if you have a really thick layer of duckweed, um, you also need to make sure that you have some oxygen flowing into your tank or that you're removing some of the duckweed. Now, in, in nature, the wind, uh, water flowing, rain, animals remove enough of it that it generally uh, is not a problem. However, sometimes it can grow so densely that uh, it can be a problem on small ponds and things. Which brings up another utility of it, even though it is a downside also. It can grow so dense that it reduces the ability of mosquitoes to lay their eggs. So it's also being used in parts of the world hit hard by malaria and mosquito-borne illness to prevent mosquitoes from growing in the water. In fact, it reduced mosquito hatch rates by 70% in some areas during studies done in 2017. Now, I want to mention that duckweed can grow so incredibly uh, prolifically that while it's great for protecting fish from predators above the water, hides them, and also makes uh, baby fish and fry feel very safe, it can present, prevent the exchange of gases like oxygen and CO2 in the water. So, if it's in your aquarium, like I said earlier, you need to give the water some surface area to work with. Usually about 20% of the tank should remain uncovered, ideally, or you need to run an air stone or a hang off the back filter. So I hope I made that clear. That's really the one major downside of duckweed other than it aesthetically. I mean, when stuff doubles its biomass every day, what else can you do? So just increase the water flow and the aeration. If you don't want it anymore, you can either reduce the light, you can harvest the duckweed, 
or you can turn up the flow. Duckweed will not live in areas where it has lots of flow. And if you harvest it, you can feed it to anything from chickens to uh, goldfish and koi, or you can actually use it as fertilizer in your garden. So I want to talk about yet another incredible property of duckweed, and that is that it has a metabolic cycle that actively removes carbon from the atmosphere, as do almost all plants, <laughs> which of course is great for climate issues as well. But from an Aquarius point of view, it means that you have a plant that is essentially being grown by pressurized CO2, as if it was in a high-tech aquarium, because half of the plant is out of the water. It's getting access to air and to the, uh, the, the gas exchange that it needs for transpiration and respiration. Uh, and it doesn't have to struggle with doing that underwater. The same is true of any immersed plant, but it's worth pointing out that as it's cleaning your nitrogen cycle out and eating the nitrates, nitrites, and producing oxygen, it's also doing that. So one thing I want to talk on before we end this is biosequestration. And it is when a living organism consumes and stores a chemical element or compound, and over time, it actually stores it within the plant. Uh, fungi also does this, as do all sorts of other uh, compounds. Uh, some of them are even in, uh, inorganic, things like um, uh, diatomaceous earth and other forms of chalk or lead or charcoal even. But in our living life forms, it's pretty special in that it can take harmful and hazardous amounts of substances like mercury, lead, or PCBs and things, and it can actually remove them from the environment and store them within itself. Now, that's kind of useful and kind of harmful because if it just degrades back into the environment, it releases a concentration of it. But if we go in and we're collecting the duckweed, we can then move it somewhere else where it won't be of harm. And because of that, it has actually been used for cleaning up several major chemical and petroleum-based uh, products that have spilled in freshwater environments over the course of the last few decades. So studies have been done on using dry duckweed and straw, as well as oyster mushrooms, uh, or at least inoculating that with oyster mushrooms, and then putting them in buoys or booms and chaining them together to float in the water where oil or other chemicals have spilled. They then cause a wall or barrier of, of uh, the floating uh, chemicals to be stopped and it absorbs it and it absorbs all the hydrocarbons and then later once levels have lowered uh, the still hazardous uh, chemicals can then be absorbed by living duckweed that grows off of those buoys and by fungi that actually live off of the duckweed itself as a fertilizer or a substrate to grow its mycelium through along with straw and sometimes a little bit of clay or something but this is already in use in several forms. And it's pretty amazing that it's being used to clean up chemical spills and oil spills in freshwater environments already. So we've covered how duckweed can provide a cheap, fast growing food source for the world or for your fish or for both. <laughs> it, it's a whole food as is that you can eat and that has possible medicinal uh, benefits uh, pending research and studies, uh, and it is a great supplement of protein, fiber, and nutrients, including all nine important uh, amino acids and uh, building blocks of life, which means we can disarticulate it and use it for who knows what in the future. You can build almost anything with those uh, in complex chemistry. Now, how it can slowly evaporate, uh, or rather, all right, so we've covered how duckweed can provide a cheap,
fast-growing food for the world, or you and your fish as is, uh, both as a whole food or as a supplement where you're taking the nutrients out of it. It's a great source of protein, 30 or 40 percent by weight, great source of fiber, and all sorts of other nutrients, including all nine amino acids uh, that humans need to live. And it slows evaporation, it removes nitrates and carbon, it conserves water uh, inherently because of the thing I just said, and it can be used to clean up even deadly toxins and chemicals, store them within itself, be disposed of safely elsewhere. And if it grows too dense, it's actually able to stop mosquitoes from reproducing. It can be a great hiding spot for your fish in your aquarium, or on an aquacultural, aquaponic type farm, it can be used to grow tilapia, which will actually eat the duckweed, then create waste that the duckweed eats. And as long as you have sun, you don't even need electricity to feed that system. Uh, but in defense of those of you who still hate duckweed and want to get rid of it, it does grow really fast. I get it. Uh, it eliminates waste and nitrates, and it's a great plant fertilizer when you uh, take it and literally just throw it out into your garden. And I get that it'll take four or five minutes, uh, maybe a week or every two weeks, to deal with it. But uh, I think there could be bigger problems in the world for the benefits that this little plant may have in store for us, and already has in store for your aquarium. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of content and uh, you like these big picture episodes where we connect the world to your aquarium and uh, cutting edge research and things like that, uh, please, you know, like, subscribe, you know the things to do. Or support the channel, become an honorary producer and become a member, only $1.99. You get lots of access to stuff in the community tab. And uh, you also get to be a, a lot more active in s having a say in what we talk about on the channel, helping me make decisions and seeing behind the scenes stuff. Plus, you get a whole 180 extra episodes of Fishery, the audio based podcast, ahead of everyone else. They're already online in my community tab for members. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time.